uh, we are on to number 120, Patrick Cleary. Thank you. Uh, longtime listener, first time caller. Love the show. Uh, however, I must admit that uh, the show has caused me a little distress lately. Uh, notwithstanding, I'm comforted by the many voices who have spoken up. I've never been so impressed and inspired by the articul articulation shown over the last few days of meetings. My idealism is returning, and it's predicated on the strength and conviction of the speakers. On behalf of everyone who's spoken, I ask that you all listen. My name is Patrick Cleary. I'm a resident of Vancouver. I want to thank you for this opportunity. I'm here to express my opposition to Resolution B2. I suspect much of what I'm about to say has already been said, but I'm opposed for the following reasons. First, up to 70% of the units can be for expensive market rentals. This seems to be at odds with the intention of reducing barriers and deepening affordability. Second, demo evictions would cause major displacement of established communities. There's no guarantee that everyone displaced will be able to return. By providing an incentive for land assemblies and the creation of large, dense developments, many existing buildings will be purchased and demolished to make way for these more robust projects. And where previously tenants had fixed rents with perhaps small incremental increases, now there's going to be a chance for a much higher rent, and they may, they may not be able to return to their neighborhoods. Thirdly, there will be an increase in land value due to zoning changes for increased height and density. This will occur, and it will occur regardless of the proposed use of land. There will be speculation, and a result, more expensive land. In fact, the Georgia Strait published an article yesterday about real estate increasing by nearly 300% of assessed value on a Vancouver street that had a new six-story condo project. Fourth, this motion goes against community planning practices and consultation processes. I note Kennedy Stewart's webpage for election as mayor boldly stated that by working together, I believe we can make Vancouver a city that works for everyone. I think the key phrase there was working together. How is allowing towers to be built without rezoning public hearings working together? In fact, it is circumventing the public consultation process. Fifth, the motion represent, references 12 stories and provides no actual dimension height. But the proposal, let's be honest, means heights of 120 to 130 feet, and these could be located anywhere in the reference zones. This makes for poor urban design. This motion is not the right approach for a city to embark on such a significant changes in the design of neighborhoods. Doing 12 stories with six FSR anywhere in any neighborhood on narrow streets throws urban design principles out the window. Six, this creates an untenable opportunity for review and consideration. Seventh, I'm concerned about the email communications and the actual representations from our council members, some of our council members, about not-for-profit organizations and social housing. Specifically, representations such as, I quote, CRA status requires them to not make a profit, or because there is no profit, there is no speculative increase in land value. I direct your attention to the Government of Canada website on not-for-profit corporations, which explicitly states, and I quote, not-for-profits are free to conduct the same business activities as business corporations. In other words, not-for-profit corporations can make a profit, end quote. And eighth, most importantly, is the principle of democratic consultation. This motion eliminates public consultation takes away the right to be fully informed, takes away the right to have confidence in existing bylaws and regulations. The activities above erode democracy. And there's a theory that democracy requires three fundamental principles. Upward control, i.e. sovereignty residing at the lowest levels of authority, in other words, the people. Political equality, we're all treated the same. And thirdly, social norms by which individuals and institutions can consider reliable, acceptable, and predictable. By fast-tracking, by removing public debate, by misinforming people, by using ambiguous definitions and eliminating consultation, you are potentially violating these fundamental principles. I agree consultation is a pain. Listening to people is a pain. But I submit there are sacrifices that need to be made for principles. And what greater principle than democracy? And I remind all of you who chose to enter the public arena that we honor democracy even when inconvenient. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And you do, uh, if you don't mind staying on the line, have uh, questions from council, uh, Councillor? Councillor Hardwick, yes. Go ahead. Um, thank you, three. Patrick. What was number six again? Uh, yeah, this creates an untenable opportunity for review and consideration. What does it mean? It means that councillor's Councillor Boyle's motion would lead to a staff report and then one single rezoning public hearing 
with just several days' notice for the public to review documents. And after that, development applications go straight to the Development Permit Board, and in some cases straight to the desk of just one person for approval. Mm -hmm. And it basically circumvents any real opportunity for neighbourhood input. Thank you very much.